starting the way. Go ahead. All right. I want to say good evening to everyone. I uh, want to welcome you into our Wednesday night uh, Bible study. Uh, so glad you uh, were able to join us today. Pray that you have had a a blessed day, a wonderful day, um, and if, you, if you're listening to me, uh, amen, you, you've had a wonderful day, amen, because, uh, amen, we're still here, amen, and that is a blessing in of itself, amen, everything may not have gone the way we wanted it to go today, but uh, that's a part of life, when everything is not going to always go uh, the way we want it to go, but what we have to do is just be grateful that uh, God has still allowed us to be here, uh, and he's allowed us to be here because he still has work for us to do. And so that's what we're doing in Bible class. We're trying to prepare ourselves to be more uh, effective and uh, more efficient uh, in the work that God has uh, assigned for all of us. And so again, I thank you all for tuning in. Uh, and so you know where we've been the last few weeks. We've been talking about uh, ministry and, and, and uh, the work of ministry and, and serving God. And uh, I, uh, I gave us a definition and we've been trying to uh, look at it uh, through this definition. We're in the third chapter of Acts. Uh, we're in the third chapter of Acts, but the definition that we want to look at as far as this ministry is, and, and that's why I said that uh, ministry takes place uh, when uh, divine resources meets human needs through loving channels to the glory of God. And so that's what ministry is. It's a definition that you go by, and, and there's four elements in that. Uh, that we should use to show that we are being effective in ministry. So ministry is when divine resources meets human needs uh, through loving channels to the glory of God. And so we, we uh, Acts the third chapter is where we've been coming from. We're talking about uh, the man uh, who has been laid uh, at, at, the, at the temple gate uh, for years. And we talked about Peter uh, and John going into the temple. And so uh, the first element was uh, to, to know the divine resources, just quick recap. And so we talked about how Peter and John knew the divine resources, that Jesus is our divine resource. And, and, and everything we need, everything we have, uh, uh, it comes from God. And so God is our resource. It doesn't matter uh, where we are. It doesn't matter how uh, successful we become in life with uh, obtaining material wealth and all those things, uh, God is still the resource behind all of those things because without God, those things will not be. And so he is our resource. And, and so we, we, we broke it down even further to say uh, that the, the, uh, the resource that God is, is, is his grace to us. It's his grace that he gives us. His grace makes us able. It, it makes us to be sufficient in whatever it is that God has called us to do. And so, and so, that is the first leg uh, in this ministry table. And so the second leg was that uh, it must meet human needs. And so we talked about here uh, last week how Peter and John uh, saw this man at the temple gate. And so we, we must meet needs. We must see the needs of people. And first of all, before we can even meet the needs of people, we have to see the needs. And so you remember we talked about last week how uh, sometimes we... We don't, we're not able to meet the needs of people because we don't see the needs. And a lot of times the reason we don't see the needs of people is because we choose not to see the needs. And so we gave the example of, 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 of uh, 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 the, the man, the Good Samaritan, the story that Jesus told about the Good Samaritan and uh, about the man who fell uh, among thieves who stripped him of his raiment and, and you know, beat him and wounded him and left him for dead. And we talked about how uh, the priest went by and this man had a need physically because he had been uh, beaten up. He had been robbed. And so he had a need physically. But when the priest uh, approached him, you know, we talked about how the priest looked upon him, but yet and still he went to the other side. He, he chose to address the needs of the man. And so he went to the other side. And so then we talked about the Levite and how he did the same thing. He saw the need, amen. And, and, and so rather than addressing the need, him as him as well went by on the other side. And then uh, there is the good Samaritan that Jesus 
was talking about. And the Good Samaritan not only saw the needs that this man had, the Good Samaritan uh, did something about the needs. And you know, the Bible says that he, he took the man, he, 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 he bound up his wounds, he put him on his, on his animal and took him back to the inn and, and took care and paid for his room and board. And so uh, we, we have to see the needs of the people before we can even begin to meet their needs. And so here, Peter and John, as they were going into the temple, the Bible says that this man had been laid at the gate. And, and verse three says, who sinned Peter? He saw Peter and John going into the temple. And so he was at the gate. He had a need physically. He was disabled. He could not do for himself. And so he had a physical need. And so they laid him at the gate every day so he could ask for alms. He could ask for money of people going in and out of the temple. And, and what we have to do is we have to do as Peter and John did. We must see the needs of people and we must address the needs of people physically, but that must not be the ultimate need that we are trying to meet with people. Ultimately, there is a greater need. All of us have physical needs. We will have physical needs. We will have emotional needs. We will have financial needs. All of those things we will have. But the greatest need that we have is to make sure that we are in a relationship with Jesus Christ. That is our greatest need, that, that whether uh, it's emotional, physical, uh, relational, whatever it is, the greatest need is to be rightly in relationship with God and his will for our lives. And so here Peter and him realizing uh, that this man had a physical need. Peter did as Jesus did. And I talked about, I think I talked about it last week where uh, uh, Jesus was at the wedding and Canaan, his first miracle and his mother, they ran out of wine, a physical need. And Jesus told her, he asked her, what has that to do with me? He said, my hour has not yet come. My hour, the reason, the purpose of me coming to this earth was to meet the spiritual needs of man. Man was at a spiritual need because sin had separated us from an eternal relationship with the Father. And Jesus said, my hour is about the spiritual needs, but what I can do is use physical needs as an avenue, as a doorway or a gate to, to, to get to the most important need of man, and that is his spiritual need. You think about it also, the woman that was at the, at the well in Samaria when Jesus went through Samaria, he knew she would be at the well. She had a physical need because she was at the well to get water, a physical water, because physically she was thirsty. But Jesus knew that not only was she thirsty physically, he knew she was thirsty spiritually. And his desire was to meet her spiritual thirst more so than her physical thirst. And you know the story. And so that's what we have to, our mindset has to be the same as Jesus's. We should not just want to uh, uh, meet people uh, physically. We ought to want to meet people spiritually because you know the adage, and I think I said this as well. The adage is if you, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach a man how to fish, he'll eat for days. And so our job is to not just be a stopgap uh, um, ministry we are to be a ministry that places people on solid footing so they can continue to grow in God. And, and that is the greatest thing because we all know it. This physical is going to pass away. It's going to deteriorate. Money, houses, all of those things are going, will fade away. But what you have spiritually what you have with God is eternal. And so that's why it's so important that we want to help people reach those needs. And so we talked about this man. And so here we see Peter uh, in verse four says, and I said, the, the second leg in the table is we must uh, meet the, the, the physical needs of the person. Our, our, we must see the human need compassionately. We must see the need and we must see that there's a need and we must be compassionate about it. We should not do as the Levite and the priest did, just overlook it. So here in verse four, the Bible says, Acts 34 says, and Peter fastened him eyes 
upon him with John. So Peter and John looked at the man. They saw him. They made eye contact with him. That is the compassionate, that is the compassion of Peter and John towards the man. They didn't look away from him. Uh, they didn't avoid him. They didn't do like the priest or the Levite. Uh, they didn't make excuses. They made eye contact with him and they looked upon him. And the Bible says in verse uh, four, he said, and Peter and John looked on him and said, look on us. In other words, we are not uh, uh, men of wealth. We are not wealthy men. Uh, and I'm sure Peter and John, and I don't know the Bible doesn't say it, but I'm sure Peter and John probably had arms to give him, probably had a few denarii to give this man because that's what he was asking for. But Peter and John was on a mission from Jesus to Christ. The, the commission that Jesus had given them was to go ye therefore teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son. He was telling them to go to recruit them into the kingdom of God. You can do it through the physical, but make sure you end up spiritually. And so Peter and John said, well, look at us. Uh, we don't have, we're not men of wealth. Look on us. And the man, verse five says, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And so the man looks back at Peter and John expecting for them to give him something. And so here verse six says, and this is where we are. Verse six says, then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So Peter said, I don't have Money, I, I don't have the arms that you're asking me for. And the arms that you're asking for, it's not going to even help you physically. It, it's, it's not going to help your, your greater need. Your greater need is a, a healing. And so Peter and John said, I can give him some arms and let him stay in the state he's in or I can give him something better. I can give him something greater that will not only bless him, but it will bless the kingdom of God. And so Peter and John said, silver and gold have I none, but what I do have, I give it to you. And so this brings us to the third leg of the table. And the third leg of the table is become channels of God's mighty resources. So in other words, we are to know the divine resource personally, then we are to see the need compassionately, then we are to become channels of God's mighty resources. And so now here Peter and John says, well now I'm going to become a channel of the resource. I'm going to become the channel of God's resource. And so Peter says, what I don't have is this money you're asking for. But what I do have, I'll give it to you. And so Peter and John gives him Jesus to Christ. He gives him the grace, the power that he, Peter, had been endowed with. He gives it to this man. And so even that's the reason why a lot of times we feel like we can't help people because we feel like we don't have the resources or we're not able to help them physically so what we do is, is we, we, we turn away or we overlook them or, or we try to get away from it rather than giving them what we do have. And we all should have the grace of God. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 6 and 10, this is what he said. He says, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing. When we have God, when we have the grace of God, I can be in a state of sorrow, but yet because I have the grace of God, he says, I'm always rejoicing. The, the sorrow does not overtake me because the joy, what I have supersedes it. And so he says in 2 Corinthians 6 and 10, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Then he says, as poor, yet making many rich. And so this will be many of us. 
Well, I don't have the finances to help. I want to help. I want to go out and distribute. I want to do these things, but financially, I'm not able. But Paul says, in being poor, even if you are poor in that area, he says, yet making many rich. How can you be poor and make somebody else rich? How can you be poor and make someone else rich? You can be poor and make somebody else rich by giving them the, the divine resource who is eternally rich. And that's what Peter and John said. Peter and John said, I may be poor. I may not have a lot of money, but I know the divine resource personally. And in me knowing him, if I give him to you, then I can make you rich, young man. And this is what they did. And um, 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 see, this is what we 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 as a as a people sometimes as a ministry. Again, we don't help people because we feel like we are supposed to be the manufacturers. In reality, all God wants us to be are the distributors. We have a manual. We have a manufacturing mentality when God just wants us to have a distributing mentality. God is the manufacturer. God is the resource. God is the one who has all, who is all and knows all. All he wants us to do is to be distributors. And people say, well, I don't have and I'm not able. Well, you, you may not, but the manufacturer, the resource does. All he wants you to do is to distribute it. Go to John if John, the sixth chapter, this is a very uh, prime example of not being a manufacturer, just being a distributor. God just wants us in his ministry is to just be distributors. He'll do the manufacturing. He just wants us to be distributors, not be stingy. And a lot of us can give, can, as Peter said, I, what I do have, I give you. A lot of us have it, but we don't want to give it. But but if you go to John, the sixth chapter, and I thought it was right in verse 11, but I, I start up a little. John 6, this is when Jesus feeds the multitude. And so John 6 and 5 says, when Jesus, these people have been following Jesus. So John 6 and 5 says, when Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company. So again, Jesus saw that there was a need. These people had been following him. These people were hungry. These people had a physical need. But Jesus knew that if I can, if I can get to them, that a lot of times people don't want to hit. And even when we preaching and teaching the gospel, people don't want to just necessarily hear the gospel. Sometimes we have to, we have to get to them through their physical need, their physical appetite. But ultimately, we are we are thriving, and 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 our end goal is to fill that spiritual void. And Jesus knew that these people were physically hungry, and a lot of the ones that were in the crowd were not only physically hungry. Jesus knew that they had a spiritual hunger, and so rather than dismissing them, his disciples wanted to dismiss them. I showed you last week in, in a couple of other stories where the disciples said they wanted to push the children away. Uh, this woman had a, her, her daughter had a, a demon in her. They wanted to dismiss. The disciples were quick to dismiss people, but Jesus sees people. And so the Bible says here, when he lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company. He saw a company that was hungry. They came unto him and he said unto Philip, where shall we buy bread that all these may eat? Jesus knew that these people were hungry. He wanted to meet their physical need. We should want to meet people's needs. And so he said unto Philip, verse 6 says, And this he said to prove him, for he knew himself what he would do. In other words, Jesus was testing Philip's faith. And he's a lot of times when situations are before us, there are only opportunities where God is checking our faith sometimes. And he wants to know, do we believe enough in him that he can handle whatever situation is in front of us? Or are we going to turn away from it? Or are we going to walk away from doing a good work? And so the Bible says here, for Jesus himself already knew what he was going to do. Seven says, Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient. There's that sufficient word 
200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. And one of the disciples, one of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which have five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? So in other words, there's a couple of things in that. Talking about to somebody else. First of all, uh, uh, they realized and they understood that what they physically had would not be enough to feed the multitude, to feed the crowd. But what they had forgot was is that they knew the divine resource. And, and so, and also, I want us to see here that uh, 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 Philip and Andrew and disciples, they, they had a treasury, so they had money in the treasury. But here Andrew says, uh, Philip said, it's not going to be, even what we got in the treasury is not going to be enough to buy enough bread to feed all these people. It's not going to be enough. But here, there is a lad that has two fish and five loaves of bread. So that's another thing. God, Jesus didn't use what his disciples had. He used what this lad had. So that tells us something else. A lot of times we dismissing young people and we, we count them out and we discarding them because they have nothing to offer to feel a need. But that's not true in this story. In this story, it was the young man that had the, the resources that God would use to bless the multitude. So let's stop saying what young people cannot do or what they cannot contribute to the problem. They, they have something to contribute if we're only willing to, 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 to converse with them and, and walk with them and talk with them and try to see what, what needs to be done. And so verse 10 says, Jesus said, make the men sit down where there was much grass in the place so the men sat down in number of about 5,000. Here's verse 11. Verse 11 says, And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they were. So in other words, Jesus because he is the manufacturer, he took the fish and the five loaves of bread and he multiplied it and then he distributed it. He gave it to the disciples and told the disciples to distribute it to those who are in need. God is, we don't, we don't have to, to be able to manufacture every solution to every problem that people have. What we have to do is just distribute sometime what God has already given us to fit the need. And we, and we lose helping people because we think it's up to us to be the manufacturer. But God simply sometimes just needs us to distribute what we already have. And that's what Peter and John did. Peter and John said, serve and go, I, have enough. I don't have enough that's going to physically help you or or what's not that's going to physically help you but what i do have is something spiritually that the divine resource the father has manufactured and has given to me for me to distribute and this is what i'm going to distribute to you in the name of jesus christ rise up and walk so god wants us to not have to be to not think that we ought to be the manufacturers and try to figure out every solution, but what we should be are the distributors. And so, let me go back over here to X. So, so my brothers and sisters, so we, we see now that uh, uh, the Bible says, Peter, seven gold, seven gold have, I none, have, I, have I none, but such as I have, I give it to thee. We have to be distributors. We have to give what God has given to us we have to be willing to give it to others. What God has given us is beneficial to us. It's sufficient for us. It's enough to help us. And if it's enough to help us, then it's enough, it's sufficient enough to help others. But we have to be willing to give it. We sometimes are afraid, but what I want you to know is what, uh, what life does to us 
depends on what life finds in us sometimes. In difficult situations, what life does to us depends on what life finds in us. So in other words, life, if, if life brings uh, a disaster to me, if life brings uh, sorrow, as I talked about it earlier to me, that sorrow cannot destroy me because of what's in me. Life does to us, it depends on what life finds in us. Life can't destroy me if I have that joy in me. If I'm weary and I'm tired and I'm weak, life can bring it to me, but it won't destroy me because I have the joy of the Lord in me and the joy of the Lord is my strength. It, it can't do it. So what is life? What does life find in you in difficult situations? Does it find the peace of God in you? Because life can't bring you chaos and confusion if it finds the peace of God in you. Jesus says, my peace, I leave here with you. I, I give you my peace, not as the world give it, but my peace. And if you have my peace in the midst of confusion and of storms and all those things, you will still have peace. And life can't, it can't bring that to you. So we have to embrace the things that God has given to us so that we in turn can give it to somebody else. A amen. A amen. So, so now if we, we, we see right here that because Peter and John, Peter in particular, because he knew the divine resource, because he walked with Jesus, John did well, they knew God. So there was a change in Peter because uh, Peter says, what I have, I give to you. But at one time, if we look but I think it's Matthew 19 and 27. There was one time when, when Peter said, uh, he said, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? So in other words, Peter is saying, we've left everything we have to follow you. So how can we give someone anything? Because we don't have nothing. But as Peter grew with God, he realized that he can get from Matthew to the book of Acts, Peter goes from, we done left all to follow you, so what do I have to give? In? I don't have anything to give anybody in Matthew. But here in Acts, Peter says, what I have, I give you. Growth. It, we, we, should, we, should, we should grow. A lot of times uh, when we're in these situations and we see people suffering and, and we are in difficult situations, I say, we always have the tendency uh, to pray to God for deliverance. God, take me out of this situation. God, remove me from this suffering. God, take me from this hurt. And rather, what we should do is instead of asking God and praying to God uh, uh, to, from deliverance, is we should be praying instead for growth. God wants to grow us. He wants to give us something out of this. A amen. We ask the Lord sometimes, how can I get out of this? Instead of saying, what can I get out of this? Lord, take me out of this. How, how can I get out of this? Rather than, Lord, what can I get out of this? And so this is uh, where we are. Peter has grown. He's matured. We are to grow and mature. Peter went from, I have nothing to give. What can I have to give? I've left all to follow you, Christ. To young man laying here at this gate. I don't have silver and gold. But what I do have, I give you because I realized that I, when I said I didn't have much, I had it all because I had the divine resource. And my brothers and sisters, I see that's my time. We have the resources. We just have to see the need compassionately. And then we must realize that God is not asking us to manufacture miracles. He's not asking us to manufacture uh, great things. He's just asking us to distribute what we already have and give it to people. So many of us have so much to give people, but we don't want to do it. Hmm. Why? I, I, I don't know, but we, we don't want to do it. When we do these things, ministry, in ministry, it should be a blessing to us. M ministry 
uh, uh, you should get out of ministry. Amen. You should not only be putting out, but you should get something out of it. It should be a blessing to you. A amen. J Jesus said, I came not to be served, but I came to serve. Jesus realized that he was getting, being blessed and being served. I'm going to say this and I'm through. I'm, go I'm going back. It, back to the, the Samaritan woman again at the well. You should get something out of ministry. You should get something out of serving others. Y'all remember the same thing in this story with the Samaritan woman when Jesus sent his disciples away to get him something, to get something to eat. And they came back and he had been talking to the Samaritan woman and, and they were sitting there eating. And when they left, Jesus was famished. It was hungry. But as they were sitting there eating, Jesus was not eating. And they asked the master, E, why are you not eating? And Jesus told them, <laughs> Jesus told them, he said, uh, my meat is to do the work of the father. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Jesus said, I have meat that you know not of. I have nourishment because I am meeting the needs. I am working ministry and it's fulfilling me. So if you don't get, if you are not getting something out of ministry, if you are not, if you are ministering to people and you are helping people and you're blessing people, and you're not being nourished, something is wrong. Maybe the uh, motive is off because some people do work in ministry and do things for different motives. But when your motive is to truly glorify the Father, when your motive is to truly add to the kingdom, then there's no way that you are ministering to people and you're not being nourished. You're not getting something in return. There's no way. Amen. Amen. So, so again, as I close for, for, for this evening, ministry takes place when divine resources meets human needs through loving channels to the glory of God. We've seen the resource. We know who the resource is. We, we know we must see the needs before we can even address the needs and want to uh, minister to the needs. And then we must be loving channels. We must be channels. A channel of water flows. Amen. It's not a reservoir. We are not called to be reservoirs. Reservoirs hold water. They, they can become stagnant, but channels flow. And God wants us to flow. What he gives us, he wants us to share with others. Amen. He wants us to be channels yes. of his resources. He wants us to be channels of his peace. He wants us to be channels of his joy. He wants us to be channels of his love. He, he wants us to be channels, not reservoirs. Amen. 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 All right. God bless you. Amen. That's enough for tonight. That's my time. So. Thank you again for tuning in. Uh, a a amen. I, I, again, I pray that uh, this has uh, blessed someone who's who who's, uh, wants to uh, help, wants to be a part of uh, in the ministry, wants to play a part, uh, and, and and feel like I, I don't, I'm not able, I don't have, I don't have this, I don't have that. Uh, what you do have, you give, and if you are a born again believer, a born again child of God, uh, we said it in the first leg of the lesson. You have the grace of God. And Paul said God's grace is enough. It's sufficient. It's enough. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes people don't want some, you think about it, sometimes uh, you can give somebody some money or you can meet somebody physically needing this almost like a, here take this, get out, get on. <laughs> it's, it's, here you, 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 you're bothering me to take this it's just to pacify a person. Here, take this, get on, leave me alone. People don't, when people have a spiritual need, your money ain't gonna get it no way. When people have a spiritual thirst, hunger, void, whatever it is, it must be filled and met with that same spiritual thing. Amen. Amen. All right, God bless you. Amen. Let's have a closing word of prayer. 
Father God, we again, we come at the close of another Bible class. We thank you, Father, for, excuse me, this day. We thank you for all that you have done in all of our lives. Uh, we pray, Father, right now, continue to pray, Lord, for this country. We continue to pray for this state. Um, continue to pray for our communities, Lord, uh, those who are still uh, in need uh, with water and uh, uh, those who are in Texas, uh, so much damage from the winter storm. Uh, Father, just we pray that you would just bless them, help them, Father, uh, help the resources that, that they are needed to be provided to them, Father, uh, through divine resources, uh, through loving channels, Father. We pray, Lord, that uh, let us as people see each other, uh, see each other compassionately, Lord, and know that you are, you put us here, Father, to, to help one another, to be here for one another. And Father, I just pray uh, that you help your people, Lord. And Father, I just thank you uh, for your son, Jesus the Christ. Uh, he is our resource. Uh, we're so grateful for his sacrifice. We just love him so much. Thank you for uh, offering, uh, sacrificing uh, your only begotten son for us. We thank you for it. Uh, we pray, continue to pray for uh, the bereaving families, all of those, Father, who have lost loved ones who are in their period of mourning. Uh, Father, please comfort, strengthen them, give them everything they need, Lord, uh, to get through uh, the difficult days ahead, Father. And I just pray, Lord, uh, that you let us who are able uh, to pass on uh, resources and whatever we can uh, to help them. Let us be uh, those loving channels, Father, so that we can, as Peter and John said, we can give what we have, Father. And so we just thank you, Lord. We love you. And we just ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.